Today we're going to take a look at the Obeya Rise. Uh, I thought we'd take a walk through. I could give you a little bit of what I like about it, a little things to look out for, uh, and run through a bit of a bike check. It's totally specced out for lightweight. It comes in at about just over 36 pounds, which is unbelievable um, for an e-bike. I've, I've tried a couple of full powered e-bikes before and they definitely have more boost, more juice, uh, more power to them. This is totally enough for me. Um, I got this bike uh, because of injuries. So for me to um, get up the hill on the climbs, I needed a little bit of help. I have uh, I had back surgery last year. I have another one coming up. Uh, I have a broken broken heel. Um, so my power is limited. So this thing helps me get up. And I, I climb for the descents. Um, on the North Shore here, whether it's Frome or Seymour, it's all about going up either one of the climbing trails or the logging roads uh, so we can do, do the descents. So yeah, so basically uh, I treat this like a mountain bike, less like an e-bike. Uh, it helps me with all my fit friends keep up on the ups and I can enjoy the downs. And on the downs, this thing has been phenomenal. Honestly, I'm coming off of an evil following and this thing is stable and feels almost just as capable. The evil's lighter, more flickable. Um, you can tell you can tell it's lighter weight and a little more agile. But honestly, like on the fun factor, uh, I have just as much fun on, on the rise here. Anyway, so let's take a look at some of uh, what's on the bike, some of the small changes I made, and maybe a few things on what I would do, do differently with it. Okay, so taking a closer look um, at, at the Rise, uh, this one has uh, 140 millimeter Fox 34 on it. Um, it, it. It also comes, some of the other builds comes with a Fox 36 with a 150 millimeter Rise. Uh, this one's a 140. Um, the head, the head tube angle on this is currently at 66 degrees, uh, which is a little steeper than I'd like. Um, I'd love to get it kind of closer to 64, 65. I do have uh, an air shaft for the Fox 34 that I'm going to replace to boost it up to a 150 millimeter uh, fork, which will put the head tube angle closer to kind of 65 and a half. So when I have to get my fork serviced next, I'll, I'll get that slotted in. Um, other changes I've made, um, it came with a race face, uh, it came with a race face handlebar, um, that had a 20, 20 millimeter rise. I replaced that with the one up, uh, carbon bar with 35 millimeter rise, uh, both for the extra rise, um, which helps with my, uh, my tender back. And then the extra little bit of compliance that you get out of, uh, out of the, this one up bar. So that's been a, a change that I, I liked immediately once I, once I made it. Um, any other changes I made? I threw on a set of rev grips. Those are the, what are they called? The RG5s. They're kind of the new rev grip that are a little bit more ergonomical. Um, they're fantastic. So they just take a little bit of the buzz out of the hands. Um, I don't know if they're super necessary for most people, but uh, for old beat up dudes like me, um, they certainly, they certainly do the trick. Um, any other changes I made? Oh yeah, I switched the tires. So these guys, this, this build came with um, a set of Maxxis Recons, which were just, just weren't grippy enough for uh, the riding that we do here on, on the shore. So I ended up putting on um, a set of uh, DHFs up front and DHR2 in the rear um, with the EXO Plus casing. I run, my, I run my pressures really low, so I think I run my front at like, oh God, like 18 PSI and my rear at 19. So I'm a light guy, I'm only like 135 pounds, so I can get away with it. Um, but uh, that made a huge difference. I noticed that right away. I did a couple runs on it with the recons and I threw on the grippier tires and it made a world of difference. I mean, you're on an e-bike, right? So the whole concept of needing extra rolling speed on the way up didn't matter for me. Uh, and on the way down, to be honest, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm breaking so much all the time anyway that I don't, I don't need fast rolling tires to go, to go down. So the grip, grip is key. Uh, I threw on a pair of one-up flat pedals. Uh, these suckers are great. Um, I've, I've used these 
on my old bike too and they work they work awesome this build came with um the fox was it the dpx2 i don't know i'll put the description i'll put the the details down in the rear um so it's it's one of the like kind of uh doesn't have a piggyback or anything but i don't know it does the trick for me it's got 140 travel on this um so yeah that's been no problems for me um one problem that has been one thing that has been a problem for me actually i'll go into two things that have been a problem for me one is uh the crank so this is the e13 carbon crank and there's a known issue so if any of you guys have the bike or are getting the bike and if they come with the e13 crank this screw here the spindle screw oops, sorry the spindle screw there comes off um totally comes loose and comes off mine came off uh on a descent um and uh my whole crank popped off so e13 sent me uh, a couple replacements and some blue loctite the blue loctite doesn't even do it so um, i've just got some red loctite which is a stronger loctite that i'm going to put on there but if you do have those cranks i suggest immediately getting some take like checking how tight they are and i would take them off and put in some some heavy duty loctite on there um because it's it's totally an own issue and if you're on the forums everyone's talking about it so uh i would take care of that um yeah and again so this thing came with super light light build so it has a xtr shimano xtr drivetrain which is phenomenal shift under power it's it's the first time i've had a shimano drivetrain and i'm sold i love it um it only comes with the two piston brake it comes with the xtr two piston brake i'm not a huge fan to be honest i, I don't know if it's my old bike had two piston brakes too i was, I was running um some shrams but uh the modulation of these xtrs i i don't love them if i was going to get another bike I'd, I'd probably try i don't know a dominion or a trp or even go back to a shram brake um don't don't love these ones um but i mean but they do the trick um it came with 180 mil rotors on the front and back um again if i if i was doing it over again i'd probably put a 203 on the front uh the, the 180 on the back for my weight is totally totally fine i, I could use a bit more on the front though uh, i'd put a 203 mil on there um came with the fox dropper now it only came with a 150 mil dropper and it's it's not enough so as you can see by kind of where i've set uh set up my seat it, it, i've had to raise it more than than i'd like so this is the dropper all the way up um, and it just the seat just doesn't get out of my way uh, so I'll, i think probably this fall i'll end up getting a one up 180 mil dropper on here just so i can put it all the way down and have my uh seek it out of the way so so yeah those are the things i would change there's kind of an, an overview of the bike itself uh, i threw on a mud guard it gets muddy here so the mud guard's been great um yeah it's definitely stopped muck from getting up in my face i don't ride with glasses so uh it's been awesome uh yeah what else about about it um you can take a look at the cockpit um i kind of did some hacky cable work i know some of you guys out there who have have them have done a much more elegant setup than me um i kind of just pinned this here's the computer for the letting you know where you are on the drive and i kind of just pinned it out of the way so i don't really notice it this flaps around a little bit but it's it's not too bad everything else is kind of the way anyway it doesn't it doesn't bug me um okay so now let's talk about this thing um on the down so um yeah again the motor the shimano is at the ep8 i'll put a description down below if you want to take take a look at the details uh it gets me up the hill it it gets me up the hill uh you have to pedal but it, it definitely just takes off the edge for me um so that's great and then on the down it does rattle a little bit so if any of you guys have watched any of my trail videos uh there'll be links in this video at the end if you want to take a look but you can definitely hear hear it kind of rattling around and i know a lot of people have talked about that um it doesn't bug me in the slightest so um I'm a guy that noise does bug me so this actually came with uh with a chain guard on it and um I uh I took off the chain guard it just it was just too noisy for me so I took it off but the the, the noise of the rattling motor um doesn't bug me in the slightest it, it's it's there 
Um, but when I'm descending, I, I just don't notice it. So that's a non-issue for me. Um, but yeah, so now on the downs, um, the thing's great. It's, it's, it feels, it doesn't feel like an e-bike. Um, it feels, it feels just like a, a mountain bike, to be honest. Um, this thing, this thing's, a, you know, it's, tra it's, it's trail, trail bike geo. It's not, it's not a full enduro. Um, the trails here can get incredibly gnarly. Um, I tend to ride, you've seen my videos, I tend to ride the, the blues. Uh, I'll, I'll, I haven't videoed them, but um, my favorite trails are the low blacks. Um, and there's, and I, and I do like the tech sections the best. I'm not, I'm not the greatest flow rider. I, I'm not great on corners. I'm, I can't really do jumps. Um, plus there's a lot of danger there for my injuries, but I do like the slow techie bits. So I like the real armored, armored corners, um, kind of the rock drops. I like, um, I like navigating through those. I can go slow and calculated. Uh, and this thing handles it fantastic. Um, yeah, it just, it, it absorbs the bumps when I need it. I feel planted. Um, it has a, it has a fairly long wheelbase compared to my, to my evil following. Um, and again, I'm not going to dive into all the specs. You can, you can look at the links below to find that out, but, um, yeah, it just feels planted. Maybe it's the extra weight that's low with the, with the motor down there. And yeah, I, I, I have confidence going through the slow, rough stuff. Um, it's 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 great. Uh, the one thing I have noticed is it has a low bottom bracket, so uh, it comes with 165 mil uh, cranks. I'm a short guy; I'm only five seven or so, so 165 mil cranks is good for me anyway. Um, but even with that, I do notice that over some of the rough stuff, I actually will not just strike pedals, but I'll I'll strike kind of the 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 bottom bracket there a little bit. It's probably a, a bit of rider error. Um, I'm not the most agile and skilled at kind of avoiding that stuff. Um, you know, you probably have a bit, again, my strength is terrible with, with all my injuries, but people who can kind of pull and pop a little more can probably avoid that. I, I kind of just have to take some of those strikes just to avoid uh, hurting myself basically. But, um, but yeah, it hasn't been a big issue uh, on those. Um, when I do hit kind of the faster flowier stuff, um, it, uh, it, it has, it's totally done great. Um, so it, 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 it will, for as unskilled as I am in the air, like if I do hit little jumps or whatever, it, it feels fine. I don't, I don't notice any extra weight um, or anything at all there. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it doesn't hold me back. Like it's, it's, it's my skill and my, my body that holds me back, not, not the bike. Um, and if you look, uh, I'll, I'll link to a, uh, I'll link to a video below, but, uh, there's a local rider, uh, local pro rider, Jeff Gulovich. God, did I pronounce that right? Jeff Gulovich? Sorry, Jeff, I've got it wrong. I'm Jeff Gulovich and I'm super excited to introduce the all new e-bike from Orbea, the Rise. Anyway, he has a video out that shows him on this thing and my God, like he just rips on it. So, um, yeah, under the right skilled rider the bike is certainly capable um for for, for air and, and all of those sorts of things on 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 berms and kind of those tr the trails that i do ride that have kind of flowy bermy fast bits uh, i have it's been great um no different than than my evil that's for sure um it holds its line it takes the berms fine and again it's it's my skill that holds me back on that not not the bike uh, yeah, so I don't know what else to say. I mean, the e-bikeness part of it. I mean, I plug it in every third ride here on the shore, um, and I never run out of battery. I don't know for those of you guys that are looking for kind of longer cross-country type, uh, the longer cross-country type riding and, and kind of battery life. I mean, it comes with an extender if you want to put it on there. Um, but yeah, for for what I do, I typically do. I don't know, hour, hour and a half rides tops. Um, the battery has been no issue whatsoever. Like I said, I charge kind of every third, every third ride and yeah, I've never had any, any battery issues. I don't even, I don't even check to be honest. I start, start on the trail, fire it up, put it in, put it on boost and go up, go down, come home. And then every third ride I, I plug it in. 
So anyway, that's that's that. But I mean, if if you're kind of more into it for the e-bike parts, there's the e-bike specs. I'll put some links below, maybe some videos to some other reviewers who kind of do a better job at kind of talking about the range and the the the, the torque and all that stuff. But uh, actually, I mean, one thing I will comment on on the torque and and the motor is. What I've really appreciated with it, and again, I haven't ridden a whole lot of e-bikes, um, but what I do really appreciate about this is it really does, this bike really f uh, takes your input and translates it well. So if you're on a technical climb and you're on like a steep, steep bit or a corner and you do need to lay it down, even on boost, um, I've, I've really learned, my, my, my muscle memory, my body's really learned how much power to put into the pedal and how much power the motor's gonna give me. It kind of, it feels how much power I'm pressing, I think. So it doesn't just like shoot me off the trail. Um, it does a good job at, I don't know, modulating or feeling how much power I want out of it without like, just like all of a sudden, like taking off from under me. So um, I feel really confident on that as well, um, both on the ups and the downs. So on the downs, you know, if there's a section where you just have to like get over a little bit of a tech section or something, Again, I just leave it on boost and I'll, I'll just apply some pedal power and it'll just kind of boost me over it uh, without shooting out from under me. So I do really like the feel of it, um, the way it kind of responds to user input. Um, I've been on a couple full powered bikes where, yeah, you put the pedal down and it, it feels like the thing's just gonna take off. Um, my brother, who's a way better mountain biker, he's been mountain biking for years, way more experienced. Um, he, I mean, he, he rides everything, but he also has a full powered e-bike. He, he talks about being drunk on power um, and that he does notice the difference coming to these lower powered uh, e-bikes. But I mean, he's, he, he has kids that he'll tow up three kids at a time with, with these bands he uses. So he, he utilizes the power a lot or he'll like fly through flats. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, I'm only 135 pounds. So the power this thing gives out, like, I, Anything more, I think I'd feel like I was on a motorbike or something, which isn't what I'm looking for. So I just need a little bit of edge taken off my climb so I can keep up with my ridiculously fit friends um, with my broken body. Anyway, um, what more do I need to say about this thing? Um, it's been amazing. A couple tweaks here and there on it, really. Um, I could talk maybe a little bit of how I got it. I mean, it, this thing is ridiculously expensive in my mind. Um, I mean, I guess value-wise compared to other bikes, maybe not, but um, I this for 10,500 US. Um, I ended up having to get it out of the US. I got it from Jensen USA. Um, once I decided that I, I wanted to get back out of the trail. So again, I haven't been on a, I wasn't on a bike until this spring for a good year and a half. Um, and I, I figured if I get on a, an e-bike, I might be able to get out there. So I started hunting around. I emailed 30 shops in Canada looking for one. And you know, these things are hard to get. I mean, with all the COVID uh, supply chain stuff, everything's limited supply. So, um, you know, I was getting quoted some, I got a couple quotes for like August, September, maybe 2021. Um, so this was back in, in uh, March, April when I was looking for these. Um, and then I got a lot of other quotes saying, oh yeah, you know, spring 2022. So anyway, I got, I got lucky and I found one at Jensen USA, size medium that fit me. Um, I, I would have gotten one of the lower models maybe with the they come with a fox 36 150 mil um <clears throat> and, a, and a burlier a burlier shock but um they, they weren't available this is the only one available so i had to go with the highest end one which i don't know maybe maybe will serve me well because with, with with my injuries even just racking the lightest bike possible is 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 a good thing um but uh it um yeah it was ten thousand five hundred us and uh, yeah, it was a bit of a rigmarole getting across the border. They would only ship it to the US, so I shipped it to a place in Blaine and then a courier picked it up and, and brought it across the border for me. That was 150 bucks to do that, which isn't ridiculous. Um, and then I had to pay 150 bucks for uh, a customs broker. Um, and there was a bit of a rigmarole on that. So if you are shipping a bike from the States to Canada, they, they, they do kind of take a closer look at it with the battery and the e-bike ness of it all they originally thought the limit was 25 miles per hour which actually i think this one is to be honest um which is 32 kilometers an hour which is which is the limit here in canada but 
the border took it very literal and 25 miles per hour came to 32.185 or something like that. So they weren't gonna let it across because it was 0.185 kilometers an hour too fast. Um, I think in Europe, the Europe, in Europe they have it set to, uh, I think 25 kilometers an hour, I believe. And in the States, I think it's uh, 25 or 32 kilometers an hour, but they, they market it as 25 miles an hour. Anyway, there was a little bit of rigmarole there, but eventually it got cleared and I got it over. So that was $300 in courier and custom broker fees. It worked out in the end. I got this thing and it got me back out on the trails. So I'm super thankful, um, super thankful for this bike.